Well, here's another unusual question I thought was worth uh, sharing with you. And that is, this person says, in your tip 131, you're teaching us gesture drawing. That's G-E-S-T-U-R-E, -E, by the way. But you're making three lines instead of one for the shapes. Other artists on YouTube use just one line. What's the difference and why does it matter? And she says some other sweet things, which I won't read to you. Well, it does matter, but maybe for reasons you might not have thought of. Well, painters, especially master painters, do lots of stuff behind the scenes that we don't usually see. Sometimes we were able to share the, uh, their drawings, sometimes, but most of the time we're not really able to see what they've done behind the scenes. Now, I call this stuff feeding the artist. Things that artists do to enhance their painting that you might not even think is associated with the painting at all. And one of those is exploring and knowing how to look not just for the shape of things, but for the movement. Now, movement implies there something is has a direction. Visual movement is the direction of a line, you might say a line, that is going in a direction. Visual movement going in a direction. All shapes have visual movement. All images have visual movement. The movement going in a direction, it doesn't have a single direction. Every motion, every movement, visual movement, has at least two directions. This way and that way, or this way and that way. Same direction. Uh, one's moving in one, one, one's moving from one place to another, and then it can go back. So if we're looking at something like this seashell, for example, the visual movement is doing this, going in that direction, but it's also going in this direction. Now gesture drawing draws movement. The intention of gesture drawing is not to create shapes that look like the image, but to explore the movement, which is just as important, or, and we'll all always enhance your ability to draw the shapes the way your eyes are actually seeing them. It's a very difficult thing to explain to people that are not accustomed to thinking this way. So many people think drawing is, is, is a, just a chore. And they, so many people think you just have to struggle. Well, you don't when you, when you feed your artist, when you go through exercises that are available for you, for exploring the movement and making yourself comfortable with seeing the movement of the shape and therefore being able to, when you draw it, draw it by its movement, uh, maybe even more so than about what you think is its appearance. In the long run, they're the same thing. The movement gives life to the drawing and to the painting. Now, the reason I use, especially when I'm teaching gesture drawing, uh, the reason I use the three, what the person calls the three lines, is that it explores, it enables my hand to feed my eyes, to feed my sensibilities with the movement in both directions. So for example, here we have this movement. If I'm looking at that and I am making that movement, if I go forward, back, and forward with it, rather than just one forward line, I am getting more acquainted with the actual movement and what it's doing. Now, a lot of people do just make one forward line, but I was taught uh, about 60 years ago, I was taught to explore all directions, to explore it backwards, forwards, and then uh, 
forwards, backwards, and forwards again. And the reason for that is that I'm exploring that movement and I'm going forward, forward, backward, and forward again. Here, then I can pick up the next movement. When it changes direction, we have a new movement. Um, now, we have evidence of master artists in history that did that same sort of thing. Michelangelo is one that I think is worth exploring. And there's one drawing, I think it's probably my, probably my very favorite drawing in all the drawings I've ever looked at in my life. Uh, one drawing by Michelangelo is one of the drawings he did in preparation for the uh, um, Madonna or mother and child. And I don't know if you can see this, but let's see if I can hold it clearly. And you can see where he's done that. You can see here, he's gone where he's explored the movement. He's explored it here. He's explored it here. You see him going back and you can see him going forward. And the same thing up in here. You can see him going forward. You can feel him going back. He starts up here. And he's not really concerned in that initial gesture. Not, not struggling just to get a single line right. But he's, he's creating the shape by exploring the movement of the shape. So if you uh, can go online and look at, look at this, um, this, is, this is a calendar from an actual show I saw of his work, his actual work. And it was just, uh, it was just an amazing thing to look at, to see, you could see the evidence where he's not finished the drawing. Uh, you can see the evidence of that back and forth movement. Now, let me just go through and show you the difference. So, uh, and by the way, when you're doing gesture studies in the, with the attitude of feeding your artist, of getting yourself, getting your body, uh, getting your hand and your eye coordinated and getting yourself uh, in the attitude of exploring movement rather than trying to struggle to identify shape, um, when, when, you, when you do that as practice, you will, I think you will find all the difference in the world in your painting. So the one thing that to observe when you're looking at any shape, look at the overall movement and the, the direction of the shape, the overall direction of the shape. You see the overall direction of this shape is here. We can see we almost a point here and a point here. But then within that we have all these different directions, all these different changes in movement. And so if I'm moving through that shape then, rather than just to make a single line that would just go like that, if I take each movement and explore that movement and explore it with, if I need to have words going in my head, I could just let those words describe what the movement is. What's it doing? What's it doing? What's it doing? Because it's a doing thing, not a um, description thing. All right, so then, so if I were doing something like this, I could start anywhere, and we always can when we're doing gesture drawing. And I like to do this sort of thing where I'm looking at the shape and I'm allowing my hand to imitate that movement back and forth, back and forth, instead of just diving into it. And then I'll, like, I'll get my hand moving back and forth, back and forth, and then I begin to explore the movement back and forth. I go forward, back, and forward again. Sometimes I may do it several times, because I've got about six of them there. But that enables me to experience the movement. And then when I'm down here, I can then change direction. Every time you change direction, you change, you, it changes movement. Every time it changes direction, it changes to a different movement. And you see we have several down here. And once I hit that one, then I can also see that I have this one that goes in this direction, and then it goes in this direction. And then I see this one goes in this direction. I see another little one there. This, which is another advantage of using the back and forth movement to explore, or the back and forth gesture to explore the movement of the shape. That if you are slowing down, you're revisiting. You're going backward. You're ta you're you're grasping. You're grabbing. You're capturing that movement backwards, and you're capturing it again you're going to stop and you're going to see a lot more. Whereas if you're just going with a single line like this, you may or may not capture that movement. And so that then you find is one of the most uh, 
one of, one of the richest experiences that you can have with gesture drawing. It's not the kind of drawing you want to show. So if your if your intention is just to show, uh, then you might just uh, struggle. <laughs> But if you're willing to feed your artist and allow your artist to grow, then give it, give it a try where you're, you're just exploring image. And I would start out with relatively simple images so that you're exploring the movement back and forth. It's a very tiny movement there. It's curving back and forth. It's a curving, a slight curving, and then it changes direction and it curves again. It changes direction and it curves again. It changes direction and it this time it's got a big long curve again now it really changes direction it starts curving the other way as you go around you see I'm just taking each movement back forth back and forth again taking it there picking it up there continuing and now I'm seeing that I've got two ways I can go I can explore the movement as it goes in here and look at that is very very interesting we have a movement in here back forth and back and we have a movement in here and then it sort of gets lost in this area right here and I notice my hand when I'm deep into that and I'm exploring that movement as movement I notice that my hand will let up on pressure as this begins to disappear uh, I can come back down here now and pick up the the movement from this side the movement of the shape from this side and so then I can go back go forth back and forth again I can curve go curve this way sometimes if you don't know the word you just say whatever comes to your mind that it is doing it can really can curve that way you don't have to say convex con curve uh convex con whatever the other con is i never can remember those words anyway and besides we're visual communicators we're communicating what it's doing we're not trying to communicate a definition of it and so um I, the, so we can do that and then I uh, see that this is moving in this direction. So if it's moving this direction, that's the direction I'll go. And then I see it takes a turn and it goes in this direction. And it, it continues to curve around like that. And then it starts curving the other way. But it's curving a very short movement. Very, very short curve that's curving this direction. At this point, I could actually begin to explore what's it doing between the shapes. You see, that's part of what's happening too, is what's happening between the shapes. So we can continue to move from one direction to the other. If we go forward and back and forward again, we're exploring both directions of the movement. It slows us down so that then we can capture little nuances of movement that, uh, that we might not see ahead of time uh, if we were just going with a single line forward. Now, it's not to say that the single line to create gesture is not beneficial. Uh, if you're doing like a, a speed gesture where where you're just uh, you're, we're just moving through it very fast with one line, I can hardly do it without pausing because I'm so accustomed to that. So it's not to say that people that use just a single line to suggest gesture, it's not to say they are wrong. It's just to say that my experience has taught me that I can build better into my artist, artistic system. In other words, I can feed the artist with more uh, depth when I use that backward, or that forward, back, and forward again exploration of both directions that we find in all the various movements that we see in shapes. So I think if you would just give that some practice and don't try to make it look like the thing, if your attitude is trying to make it look like the thing, it's not going to work because that's what you're going to be trying to do. But just take that discovery attitude. Try to discover which way is it moving? Which way are all these edges moving? How are they moving? Are they curving, drooping, dropping, rising? All the things that movement can do. And But you don't have to, you know, just let the words come. Be sure that the words that come are movement words not words like shell. Shell doesn't tell you anything or what it's made of doesn't tell you anything. What tells you what to do is where is it going? Where is that line going and how is it moving? So give that a try and see if you don't have fun with it too. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, 
click on the bell so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip which is every week and if you have a question leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you also take a trip over to dynamize.com where I have full length lessons downloads DVDs lots of other stuff there some free stuff for you and while you're there you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new